Hi, this is Mike Bruska, uh, partner with Davis and Bruska. And if you've followed any of my other podcasts, you know that uh, I focus primarily on nursing home neglect and abuse cases. And I've been doing it a long time. And I find that there's a lot of um, people that get pushed into this area because their mom or dad has an unexpected injury or illness, and they don't know anything about it. And the, the in, ins and outs of nursing homes are uh, it takes some time to understand. So my goal in these podcasts is to help people understand what's going on in there, look for signs of serious problems, and uh, hopefully uh, I never meet you. <laughs> uh, today, what I want to talk about is dietary in the nursing home and malnutrition. I see this frequently, and these are frequently very preventable problems. They can be very serious problems. And I want to talk about what you should see what you may see, and what to do if you find yourself with difficulties in this area. Uh, now, uh, every nursing home has got to have a dietary department. This is a usually a registered dietitian. This person will work with nursing and with food services, and the three of them will be a team that should deliver proper nutritious food to a resident. Uh, nutrition is extremely important. It's extremely important on many fronts. You may have read a study that just came out recently that found that ultra-processed foods, that is pretty much anything that comes out of a box or a wrapper, uh, have been linked to uh, 32 comorbidities. That's like serious sicknesses as a result of food that people are eating solely. I'm not talking about exercise or anything else. And when our bodies are not doing well or sick or recovering from a surgery or a fracture, being sure that you have proper nutrition is important so that the body can heal. So a person who goes to a nursing home for rehab with a plan on going home is going to have to have good nutrition in order to get them back on their feet. So these things are very important. And how different foods operate within the body, there's a lot more knowledge on that nowadays, the difference between different types of proteins, the carbohydrates, and things of that nature. So uh, it's very, very important. Uh, and in many respects in facilities, it it, it gets paid short shrift. Um, so what ha what should happen? Well, every resident comes into a nursing home should have a, a assessment by a, a registered dietitian. And you should see this in a, in a chart. And this document is going to discuss any types of barriers, physical barriers to good nutrition like dentures or swallowing problems or chewing problems. A common one you'll see in people with cognitive impairment is called dysphagia. That's where you have difficulty swallowing food. And so looking at any kind of physical barriers that may be a difficulty to good nutrition. And also, uh, understanding what a person's food preferences are. And uh, not everyone likes oatmeal. <laughs> okay, so if that's what's on tap for breakfast every morning, that's going to be a problem. So understanding what people's food preferences are. And so in order to get this information, the registered dietitian should meet with the resident, should sit down with the resident, take a meal, a meal with the resident, and should talk to the family. The other thing the dietitian should also do is look to see if there's been any recent weight loss, which will come from hospital records or from the family. And they should also look at their labs to see if they're deficient in anything. So if you get certain labs done, there are certain uh, things that are tested for, which are markers for malnutrition, in particular protein, and seeing if a person has enough protein. And this is extremely important, in particular when a person is recovering from a surgery, or in particular, if they have any kind of skin breakdown, because protein is what's going to be the building block of what heals skin, what heals bone, what heals muscle. So if a person is low on protein, that's going to be a problem. All right. So unfortunately, uh, dietary is not typically a reimbursable expense by Medicare. So... Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times registered dietitians get overburdened with the amount of residents they see. That is, they, the facility has to have a dietitian, but since they're not getting money reimbursed, they 
don't put a lot of resources into this. And as a result, you'll have one dietitian that's in, responsible for 100 residents, 150 residents. Sometimes you'll have two part-time dietitians. Um, that way they don't have to pay health benefits. I mean, it's really unfortunate. And so the ball gets dropped here a lot of times. So what can you do as a family member is you can ask to be in with the assessment by the registered dietitian when they meet with your resident. In this way, you can be sure they're asking the right questions, finding out what the person likes to eat, reviewing the labs, taking a look at it. Now, most dietitians I will find are very detail oriented. So you will find a, a lot of detail about your resident's condition you should in that assessment. However, unfortunately what happens a lot of time is because the registered dietitian has so many residents they're caring for, they're really reliant on nursing to tell them if there's a problem. And that's primarily with feeding. Many residents require assistance with feeding, right? Either they need uh, someone to set their tray up for them or they physically need someone to feed them food. This is, feeding that is, is the most time consuming process for any certified nurse aide more than grooming, bathing, anything else. It takes the most amount of time. And so oftentimes when aides are overburdened because the facility is short staffed, this one falls right off the map. And so what you'll see is a resident that has brought the food, requires assistance for feeding, either the CNA is trying to shovel it in too fast before they can swallow, I've had choking cases in those instances, or they just put the food down and walk out because they don't have enough time right and then later they collect the food now you won't know that if you're not there right and uh, so it is important uh, when you visit to be sure that your resident is eating and sometimes the families often can feed themselves uh, feed the resident themselves and uh, being sure that your resident gets enough food one of the first symptoms you'll start seeing is weight loss almost all residents are going to be weighed on some kind of schedule and so there is actually a federal regulation on weight loss that tracks it and says if you've had a certain percentage in a certain period of time, the facility has to respond to that. Oftentimes I find they don't. Oftentimes I find the registered dietitian may not know, right, what the problems are because they're not being told by nursing. So when you have a breakdown in communication, that's a, that can be a very serious problem. Another issue that I'll see sometimes is instead of looking for food preferences that could satisfy a dietary deficiency, they'll look to order supplements. So you see this with protein a lot, and you'll see orders for things like Prostat, which is a chemical protein supplement for a person who is uh, not getting enough protein. Unfortunately, as one of my dietary experts uh, has told me that Prostat tastes like cherry cough syrup. It doesn't taste good and people don't want to eat it. What's a better solution is just finding out is there a way to supplement protein in this person's diet that they might like, like a protein shake or giving them heavy cream or fortifying cereal or something else other than giving them chemicals to supplement for the protein deficiency. And you really should see that, that the dietitian is trying to do other things, right? Uh, another issue that I see sometimes is people who have, in particular, Parkinson's disease or cognitive impairment, uh, losing weight. And one of the problems is because they shake, they can't get the food to their mouth. And there are tools to fix that. They're called weighted utensils. These are uh, a little, they weigh more, they're heavier. And so if a person does have tremors, it's not going to impact their ability to use them as much. It's a very simple fix. And a lot of these fixes in dietary are very simple. And unfortunately, when they get overlooked, wounds form, wounds don't heal, people don't recover from surgeries, they start losing weight, and that can trigger a whole host of things that come afterwards. So these basic building blocks of just getting enough of the right kind of food, right, are very important. Because when you look at malnutrition, it's those two things. You have to have the, the, the right amount of food and you have to have the right kind of food, right? And so when you have a good combination of those and dietary is working with nursing, which is working with the food services department, you get good outcomes. And when you have a short nursing staff, short dietary staff, these things get missed and then serious problems happen. And I've had 
multiple cases into my career with malnutrition as the centerpiece. That is, people lost catastrophic amounts of weight, like 30 pounds in a month or something along those lines. And like I said, that can be a serious problem. It's your body's ability to fight infections, repair itself, all kinds of things with the basic uh, fundamental uh, denominator of just having enough of the right kind of food. And so if you are advocating for someone in a facility, it, it's really important to understand what the dietary recommendations are. Are they being met? Can your resident do what the facility believes they can do? And meeting with that dietitian to be sure that those three departments are working hand in hand. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it or got something out of it. As always, if you, uh, if you uh, ever have problems in this department that you're not getting sorted at the facility level, feel free to give me a ring and talk about it with me and uh, good luck. Thank you.